I am the Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And tonight, in this obscure section of a large city, we find a woman shopping for an unusual item. Find anything you like? Yes. I'll show you. I want this one. In marble. Yes, ma'am, but uh, executed in marble, it will be quite expensive and uh, around $5,000 and will require about three months' work. Three months? That'll be all right. And uh, what will the inscription be, please? Edith Marie Harrison, beloved wife of Ralph Harrison. Date of birth? February 4th, 1901. Date of death? I'm not sure yet. You'll be notified. And uh, what's your name, please? Edith Marie Harrison. Well, Jimmy. Hello, Ralph. Welcome. I don't think I've met Mr. Hey, this is Ralph Harrison, our host. Ralph, this is Kay Morrell, my favorite model. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Jim always did have an eye for beauty. Please go on. I love flattery. She isn't just kidding. I'll take you to the Oasis. Ah, uh, loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and that. I'll settle for a tall drink. Ralph! Linda! Shoot. Well, good to see you. <gasps> Meet the boyfriend, Joe Conroy. Oh, the super columnist. This is a pleasure. The pleasure's all mine, Mr. Harrison. Well, the bar's over there. Each are there. Just go to it. Thank you. <laughs> Got you in my arms already? So? Very nice. Your phone's ringing, Ralph. Oh, so it is. Excuse me. Hurry back. Ralph Harrison speaking. Yes, Laura? Your wife has just had another heart attack, worse than any of the others. I've sent for Dr. Winthrop. I'll be right home. See, folks, I'm awfully sorry, but I have to leave for a little while, but I'll be back soon. Just carry on. He's going. Who cares? Nobody's gonna miss him. You took the words right out of my mouth. I don't see why everybody picks on him. I think he's rather nice. Oh. Huh. Why do you attend his parties if you don't like him? Why not? Somebody's gotta help drink his liquor and eat his food. It's too good to pass up. That, my friend, is one of Ralph's paintings. What the devil do you call that? Or am I showing a colossal ignorance of art? That is the ultra of something or other. 
He calls it Autumn Symphony. You mean he actually sells things like that? <laughs> no, he doesn't have to. His wife gives him all the money he needs. How is she? Well, don't stand there staring at me. You'll have to ask the doctor. He's up there with her now. Well, what brought on the attack? She was all right at dinner. She left the house shortly after you did. And? And she returned about an hour later in a highly nervous state. The attack came on while she was getting ready for bed. Did she say where she'd been? No, and Jules didn't drive her. She took a taxi. What's the good of having a doctor? She won't take his advice. I pleaded with her not to go, but she said it was urgent. I'd like to speak to you privately, Mr. Harrison. Come in here. I'm afraid her life expectancy will be very limited. A few months, perhaps, maybe only weeks. Well, I couldn't get along without her. Is there anything you can do? There's no cure for a condition such as hers. You'd better go up now, before the sedative I gave her puts her to sleep. There'll be a nurse here presently, and uh, she'll follow my instructions. Hello, Ralph. I'm sorry I had to send for you. I hope they didn't frighten you. I'm terribly sorry I wasn't here when you needed me. You shouldn't have gone out tonight, darling. Supposing you were taking me ill when you were away from home. Please take better care of yourself for my sake, as well as your own. I won't do anything foolish you can. I promise. Fred, how about getting me some breakfast? Sure will, Mr. Harrison. Fruit juice and a large pot of black coffee. Yes, sir. Hi, Jim. Hi. Okay. Hello. Oh, don't look so sour. I'm only going to stay for a minute. I, uh, want to return this. You left at the studio last night. Thank you, Ralph. By the way, Jim, I'd like to borrow Kay when you're through with her for a while. I, uh, I've looked all over for a model like her. I don't know when I'll finish with her. Fibber, you said you'd be through with me this afternoon. Well, anytime. I'm in no hurry. Whenever she's available. It's a deal. I'll drop over as soon as Jim is fed up with me. That's what I wanted to hear. Well, goodbye, Jim. Why did you agree to pose for him? Well, I have to earn a living, don't I? Yeah, but you don't have to pose for a slap and dab painter like him. Where's your pride? I can't eat pride, darling. Besides, you said yourself he pays double the scale. Well, so what? Do you want that beautiful face of yours featured in some... Uh, Delirium like his autumn symphony? <laughs> Couldn't be that you're jealous, could it? All right, so I am. 
I saw the way he went for you last night. Don't worry, darling. He's just a pigeon to me. Well, maybe so. But you be careful. If he gets fresh, why, uh, threaten to tell his wife. That'll stop him quick. If he loses that meal ticket, he'll have to go back making sketches at the fairground. Well, you finally managed to get here, I see. Don't pick on me, Mac. I had a rough night. I thought you were old enough to know better. I am. But Linda dragged me along to one of those artist shindigs. I got a tip on a story here that's right down your alley. Yeah, good. Recall that unidentified stiff the Coast Guard pulled out of the bay several months ago? Yeah, but spare the details. My stomach is doing nip-ups already. Well, Mr. X's grave in Potter's Field now bears a magnificent monument instead of a numbered marker. What does it say on the inscription? That's the point. There is no inscription. Well, that means somebody identified him but didn't want it known. Right. I think I need a little fresh air. I don't know the name of the firm that set up the monument, but you ask Parker. He discovered it. Thanks, Mike. Yes, I'll take care of it right away. Thank you. Goodbye. Good morning, sir. Are you interested in selecting a memorial? No, but I am interested in finding out who purchased the beautiful edifice for that nameless grave in Potter's Field. I'm Conroy of the News Tribune. Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't give you the answer. You see, we don't know the name of the purchaser. How come? Well, it happened like this. The order came in the mail, signed a friend. Enclosed with it were 25 $100 bills, so we filled the order. It's none of our business if the friend wishes to remain anonymous. Well, certainly not, but buying a monument without giving an inscription sounds screwy to me. Those sort of things are common in our business. Why, only last night a woman came in here shopping for a tombstone. She picked out one of those big gates of jar numbers, and when I asked her for the inscription, she said, Edith Marie Harrison, beloved wife of Ralph Harrison. Ralph Harrison? Yes, do you know him? I know an artist by that name. Well, anyhow, when I asked her for her name, she said, Edith Marie Harrison, just like that. Never better than I. You mean she bought the monument for herself? Why, yes. Isn't that one for the book? Yeah. Hmm. You may have ten minutes with your husband now. Oh, how nice. If you promise to control your emotions. I will. Miss Bailey, would you please bring me your lipstick? And my diary from the desk drawer. Now, now, now. You will have plenty of time for your diary when I permit you to sit up. All right. Let's see how much you can improve by my next visit, huh? I will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Winslow. We'll continue with the same medication for the next 24 hours. Yes, Doctor. You may see her now, but make it brief. And wipe that worried look from your face before you go in. I'm so glad you're better. You know, I didn't sleep last night worrying about you. You're such a dear. And all the lovely flowers, thank you very much. What did the doctor say? Well, he's convinced that you will recover completely. But you're going to have to stay in bed, perhaps, for weeks. I was afraid he'd say that. What difference does that make? We'll make it up by taking a trip somewhere. We'll make believe we're on our honeymoon again. It'll be wonderful, Ralph. You better rest a while, Kay. I'll get you a cold drink. considered employer. Thank you. Penny for your thoughts. Oh, they're not worth a penny. As a matter of fact, I'm not in the mood for sketching. 
What do you generally do to get in the mood? Oh, go to Montmartre, have lunch, listen to the gypsy music. Why don't you try it again? I can find something around here to do in the meantime. I want you to go with me. Oh? Maybe your wife wouldn't like it. Oh, she's not that conventional. Well, I am a bit hungry. Good, let's go. Ralph, you seem to be brooding over something. Oh, I don't want to bore you with my troubles. It might make you feel better if you got it off your chest. Well, when I left my party the other night, I was called home. My wife had suffered her second heart attack. Oh, how awful. I came back to the party later, because there wasn't anything I could do. In fact, I'm afraid there isn't anything anyone can do. No wonder you couldn't work. It must have taken a lot of courage even to attempt it. You don't know the strain it's been, living from day to day, not knowing what moment I'll get word that she's had another attack or passed on. Poor soul. Think of the strain on her, too, knowing she's only living on borrowed time. Yes, getting me down. Isn't there any chance for her to get well? Doctor says not. That's why I need companionship, trying to forget. I'm so glad you told me, Ralph. I only wish there was something I could do to help you. There is. If you'll just be my friend, dine with me occasionally, let me confide in you, it'll help a lot. Left hand for friendship. Hiya, kitten. Hi. Come on, peel off that Eskimo parka. I'm taking you to a place where they make crepe Suzettes that are out of this world. What? At this hour, it's after 12. So what? Suzette's always tastes better along toward morning, seeing as how they're pancakes. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> All right, I'll go. But you're bringing me right back after the Suzettes. No gallivanting around till dawn. Understand? Cross my heart. <laughs> Say, Linda, this is a nice job, this magazine cover you're doing. Thank you, Joseph Aloysius. Your model must have been a raving beauty. Did I ever meet her? You did not. You're not going to get a chance to, either. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I lost my last boyfriend. Say, wasn't that the model you said Calhoun was crazy about? Yes. K. Morrell. Maybe Harrison ought to be painting barns instead of pictures, but he isn't so dumb at picking a nifty dish. Well, I'm not so sure he did the picking. Oh? K. has a little larceny in her makeup. I know, because she posed for me. I wonder if she knows what I know. Knows what? Remind me sometime to tell you the story of a tombstone salesman. beautiful, but you always look adorable. Thank you, Ralph. Did I take too long dressing? No, we've got all kinds of time. I wonder who that is. Miss K. Morell? Yes? Sign this, please. from you, you darling. Like it? Oh, I'm crazy about it. 
It's the most beautiful gift I've ever received. But I can't accept it from you. Why not? You know why. I appreciate your thoughtfulness, Ralph, but I'm sure you'll think much more of me for not accepting it. I have no right to say this, but I've grown to care a great deal for you. If I were free, I would ask you to marry me. How would you feel about that? I had no idea you cared that much for me. But you're not free, Ralph, so let's not even think about it. We'll just be friends. If we don't hurry, we'll be late for the theater. Systolic, 155. Diastolic, 104. I don't seem to have any strength. Well, don't be discouraged. Your weakness is due mainly to uh, inactivity. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. It was nice meeting you, Miss Harrison. Thank you, Dr. Gunther. I hope you can help me. I'm sure I can. Goodbye. I'd like to see a cardiograph of her. I presume you have one. Several. I'll show them to you when we get back to the office. Good. Mr. Harrison's waiting to see you in the study. Thank you. Mr. Harrison, this is Dr. Gunther. How do you do, Mr. Harrison? How do you do? Dr. Gunther is a specialist. I brought him in for consultation. Good idea. I believe he'll be able to do Mrs. Harrison some good. He's been achieving remarkable results with heart cases such as hers. Well, I'd give anything if you could help my wife. Mm -hmm. I'll do all I can, you may be sure of that. Let's all hope for the best. Well, goodbye, Mr. Harrison. Brian. Goodbye. You're quite concerned, aren't you, Ralph? If Dr. Gunther can make Edith well again, it'll spoil all your plans. You know you're only waiting and hoping for her to die so you'll be free to marry Kay. Hello. Well, the queen herself. Come in. Miss me? Now tell me Ralph's finished with you. Oh, finished. He hasn't even started. Well, what have you been doing all this time? Well, I've posed as a Mexican peasant woman, a Chinese sing-song girl, Lady of the Harem. I can't imagine what I'll be next. Don't ever let him see you on a horse. He'll want to paint you as Lady Godiva. <laughs> Very funny. I don't know what to make of him. He never finishes anything he starts. Cigarette? Thanks. He's just stalling to keep you there. This reminds me. I bought you something the other day. I'm tired of you offering me cigarettes with the bends. Am I uh, to consider this a reward for introducing you to Harrison? It's a general idea. Doing all right for yourself, huh? Well, what started out as a routine job has possibilities now of turning into a career. Maybe so. But careers don't always last. Pigeons can fly away. Now, if I were you, Kay, I wouldn't give up all my old friends before I made sure that I wouldn't have to fall back on them someday. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. Little Kay isn't going to burn her bridges. Well, thanks for your interest. Bye, Jimmy. Mrs. Harrison! I've been walking a little every morning for the past ten days. We've been keeping it a secret. I'm so happy to see you up again. And tell her the rest, Doctor. Mrs. Harrison has improved so remarkably that she isn't going to need a nurse any longer. Really? And best of all, I may get dressed and go out. Laura, find me something nice to wear. Oh, yes. But don't overdo yourself, please. I won't. I'll say goodbye now. I hope you keep on getting better every day. Thank you, Miss Bailey. You've been very nice, and I do appreciate it. I'll be back for a checkup next Wednesday. Now, please be sure and continue to take your medicine regularly. Don't worry, I will. Good. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, good afternoon, Mrs. Harrison. Hello, George. Mr. Harrison's been telling me how sick you've been. It's mighty nice to see you out again. Mighty nice to be out. Yes, ma'am. George, I guess Mr. Harrison hasn't come back from lunch. Will you let me in? Oh, I'd be glad to. There you are. Thank you. And George, yes, if you happen to see Mr. Harrison, don't tell him I'm here. I want to surprise him. I got you. Why do you want to quit modeling for me? You know why. All you've been doing is making sketches of me in different costumes. And you haven't finished one of them. I might as well be posing for a skywriter. Well, what difference does that make? You're getting paid. Besides, I like to have you near me. I love you more than anything in the world. You have no right to say such things. Well, you told me that you cared for me. Or well, you even inferred that if I were free, you'd marry me. But you're not free. Well, if you'll only wait a little while, I will be. I'll devote my whole life to make you happy. Sorry, Ralph, but you'd better forget about me. Oh, don't say that, Kate. I couldn't go on without you. Well, I haven't got time to argue about it now. Give me a ring tomorrow or the next day. Okay, wait. Kate, listen, I've got to talk to you. studio and I'll call the doctor. No, no, please. Uh, I'll be all right. Are you sure? You're so welcome to come in and lie down. Oh, thank you very much. I'd, I'd rather go home. You see, this is my first day out and I'm still rather weak. Well, we'll take you to your car. Thank you. Mrs. Harrison? She wants to see you. Actually up and dressed? 
Well, when did this happen? This morning. Well, what a pleasant surprise. Why didn't you tell me? Well, you don't know how glad I am. What's the matter, darling? Stop acting, Ralph. There's nothing quite so contemptible as a hypocrite. A hypocrite? Well, how, how am I going to defend myself? I don't know what you're talking about. You have no defense for what you've done to me. Well, what have I done? You've destroyed all the love and respect I ever had for you. It was such a nice day. I took a ride this afternoon. I was so happy to be out again. And I'd been thinking for days how glad you'd be that I was getting well. I stopped at your studio. But you were out. So I had the porter let me in. I wanted to surprise you. But the surprise was on me. I was there in the dressing room when you came in with her. Well, I'm glad you found out about it in a way. I've been wanting to tell you, but I didn't know how. I guess it was the worry about you night and day and the loneliness without you. I wanted companionship, and she led me on. Oh, stop lying, Ralph. It's perfectly obvious that I'm standing in the way of your romance. That you're even hoping that I'll die so that you'll be free to have her? That's not true. I don't think you ever loved me. I've just been a convenience with a checkbook. I still love you, I swear I do. I despise you for what you are. And you shan't have another penny of my money. Edith. Edith, everyone makes mistakes. I'll make it up to you if you'll give me a chance. You may use the studio temporarily until you find another. Or perhaps you'd rather go back to peddling your silly caricatures. If you wish to get in touch with me in the future, please do so through Mr. Loring, my attorney. And now will you go? <laughs> Harrison, may I please speak to Mr. Loring? I'm sorry, but Mr. Loring and his wife have gone out, and I don't expect them back until late. Any message? Yes. Will you ask him to call me when he comes in? Please tell him it's urgent. Yes, ma'am. I'll be glad to. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Harrison and I have had a slight misunderstanding. I'll stay at my studio for a few days. Will you forward my mail to me there? Yes, sir.
Harrison residence. This is Henry Loring. I'm returning Mrs. Harrison's call. She said it was urgent and the phone her as soon as I came home. Oh, then I'd better call her, Mr. Loring. Just hold the wire. Something terrible's happened. I found Mrs. Harrison lying on the floor, and I can't rouse her. Where's her husband? I see. Then you'd better call our doctor, and I'll try and locate Mr. Harrison. Yes, thank you, Mr. Loring. I'll call Dr. Gunther right away. unnerved, are you, Ralph? Setting the stage was comparatively easy. But what now? Has your wife taken the medicine, and uh, did the doctor believe she died from natural causes? It's the uncertainty of not knowing that's getting you down. Too bad you can't phone your home. No, there's nothing to do but wait. A lot of things could have happened since you left the house. Maybe Loring got in touch with Edith, and she had him cut you out of her will. Yes? Hello? a surprise. I don't think you've ever been here before. I just came by to give you a message, and I'm afraid it's not very good news. What do you mean? Your wife has had a relapse. The housekeeper found her in a coma on the floor of her bedroom. Well, why didn't Laura call me? Well, she was too upset to even talk coherently, so I volunteered to come after you. Well... I'm sorry, Mr. Harrison, but you're too late. Did she suffer any? She was dead when I arrived. I don't understand. She was doing so nicely, I thought she was going to get well. In cases like hers, one never knows when a relapse can be expected. I'd like to be alone, if you don't mind. I'm sorry. I understand how you must feel. I can be of further service. Have Mr. Harrison get in touch with me. Yes, Mr. Loring. If Dr. Winthrop had continued treating Edith, she'd be alive today. How can you say that? Dr. Winthrop admitted he'd done all he could for her. It's too ethical to experiment. I have a good notion to have Dr. Gunther's medicines analyzed. I've thrown them all out. What right did you to touch Edith's medicines? I was acting under orders. Whose orders? Dr. Gunther's. He told me to dispose of them. 
Oh, so that's it. What a clever way to cover up one's mistakes. If you feel that way about it, why don't you go to the Zenith Pharmacy? Every one of his prescriptions is on file there right now. Maybe I will. Before you do, remember this. She was doing fine until she went to your studio to surprise you. Three months have passed since the mortal remains of Edith Harrison, reduced to ashes, were consigned to a niche in a cemetery crypt. Time has stilled Ralph's fears that the finger of suspicion would ever be pointed at him. Home at last, darling. I was hoping the honeymoon would never end. It won't. We won't let it. I wish we didn't have to come back to this house. Well, while we were away, I had it refurnished and redecorated. It's all brand new. You're such a dear. Charles, put the car in the garage and take the luggage upstairs. Yes, Mrs. Harrison. Oh, Laura, this is Mrs. Harrison. It's nice meeting you, Laura. How do you do? Dinner will be served whenever you're ready. Thank you, Laura. She resents me, Ralph. Oh, don't pay any attention to her. <laughs> She's a part of the past, isn't she? Yes, she worked for Edith for years. Why don't you get rid of her? Well, I'd like to, but Edith had it in her will that she was to have employment and a home here as long as she lives. Oh, don't think about it. I'll take care of it later. I want to show you the house. Lovely. It couldn't be more perfect. No, I'm so glad you like it. Come in. Yes, sir. Here's the mail that came while you were away. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, darling. something Edith ordered that I didn't know anything about. Let's go out at dinner, huh? Too late. Not at all, sir. Hey. Hello, Joe. Ralph. Well, I'm glad you could come. I'm sorry I'm late, but you know how it is working for a newspaper. Well, you're only one drink behind, but we'll fix that right up. Hi, Helena. Well, what kept you so late, Mr. Conroy? A woman? Well, it was a woman at that. Or perhaps I should say Exhibit A in a slight case of murder. Who got the axe this time? Mrs. Blanche Bennett. Only it happened to be a 45 caliber slug that did the business, not an axe. Oh, I thought a burglar shot her. That's what the police thought, too. Until a smart cop from Homicide named Higgins discovered that Bennett had been running around for some time with another woman. Well, is that sufficient proof that Bennett killed her? No, but it's a darn good motive. Uh, Bennett? What Bennett is that? James Bennett, the hotel man. Oh. The story broke while you and Kay were on your honeymoon. Anyway, Bennett was arrested this morning. And I happen to know the DA is preparing an indictment charging him with premeditated murder. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I hope I haven't ruined your dress. Oh, think nothing of it. I should just sue you for damages, Ralph Harrison. Go ahead. Everybody sues the Reds. <laughs> By the way, Ralph, what did you ever do with that gravestone? Gravestone? Yeah, the one from the Curtis Monument Company. Oh, that. 
why I paid for it and told them to keep it. Joe, I'd like you to meet some people. Excuse me. What are you doing out here, Ralph? I oh, just having a smoke. I couldn't sleep. Anything troubling you? No, not a thing. Ralph? Yes? What did Joe Conroy mean when he asked you about that gravestone? He was referring to a monument that Edith had ordered for herself. Then you didn't know she'd expected to be buried? We didn't discuss such things. I didn't know anything about the monument until I got a bill for it. Too bad she never told you about it, don't you think? Kate, please, let's not discuss it. I'm sorry. Didn't you get any sleep last night, dear? Guess I ate too much at the party. Never again. Bennett confesses to murder. Breaks down after hours of questioning. After sticking steadfastly to his plea of innocence, Bennett suddenly broke down and confessed to the murder of his wife when confronted with the damaging evidence contained in her diary. Entries in Mrs. Bennett's handwriting gave mute testimony to the fact that he tried to force her by threats to divorce him so he could marry another woman. They also spoke of her growing fear that he was planning to kill her. Oh, how awful it must be for a wife to suspect that her husband is planning to kill her. Mm -hmm. Why do you hate me, Laura? I've never done you any harm. Ralph Harrison's love for you is what caused Edith's death. But why blame me? I certainly did nothing to encourage Ralph while she was still alive. You didn't waste any time after she was gone. Well, why should I? I was tired of fighting for a living, and marriage to him meant security. You have no right to ease and luxury provided by her money. I have the right of every wife to share her husband's worldly goods. He only married her for her money, and then he waited for her to die so he could get himself a younger and more attractive woman. Stop it, Laura. I won't allow you to say such things about my husband. They're not true. You don't have to believe me. Ask Mr. Loring. He'll tell you that she phoned him the night she died. What are you driving at? She was going to change her will. If Loring had been in that night, your husband would be a pauper today. Why are you telling me all this? Everyone thinks she died of another heart attack. Well, I'm not so sure. I won't listen to another word. Ralph isn't that kind of a man. Besides, if you had any proof, you'd tell the district attorney, not me. Believe what you like, you have to live with him. But the police were certain, too, that a burglar killed Mrs. Bennett and her husband would have gotten away with murder if they hadn't found her diary. Edith Harrison kept a diary, too.
are you looking for? I don't really know, but what you told me a while ago made me think. So you're beginning to suspect, as I do, that he killed Edith. Don't say that. If I thought he did, I'd be afraid to stay with him another day. Do you think I've liked staying here, believing him a murderer? I only did it in the hope of finding some way to make him pay for all the suffering he caused her. That sounds too awful to believe. Can't you see that he acts like a man with a guilty conscience? Well, he has been acting rather strangely now that you mentioned it. Laura, whatever became of Mrs. Harrison's medicines? I threw them out. All of them? Why, no, come to think of it. There was one bottle I couldn't find. One of those special prescriptions that you can't have refilled. I wonder what happened to it. Mrs. Harrison was supposed to take another dose at 9 o'clock the night she passed away. Nearly an hour after Mr. Harrison left the house. No wonder he blamed Dr. Gunther for her death. What do you mean? He claimed he wanted to have all of her medicines analyzed until I told him I'd thrown them out. Don't you see? He was looking for that bottle. Then Edith must have hidden it somewhere. Yes. Yes, it must be here amongst all the things they brought up from her bedroom. Well, come in. What's the matter, Kay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Has Ralph been here today? No, I haven't seen him for quite a while. Please lock the door. I don't want him to know I'm here. Now, look, I don't want to get mixed up in any of your domestic troubles. I've got enough to worry about. It's nothing like that, believe me. I need advice, and you're the only friend I can turn to. Okay. But remember, I'm not pulling any chestnuts out of the fire for you. You won't have to. Jim, I'm frightened. I think I'm married to a murderer. What? I think Ralph poisoned Edith. Are you crazy? You know she died of a heart attack. I'm not so sure about that. He could easily put something in a medicine. Well, now, why would he do that? She was dying anyway, wasn't she? No, she was getting well. Oh, well, you haven't any proof against her. Maybe I have. I found this hidden away in Edith's knitting bag in the attic, and I think there's poison in it. Take one teaspoonful every three hours. When was it she died? The 26th of last May. And this prescription's dated May 16th. Hmm. Maybe you've got something, Kay. How do I go about having it analyzed? I didn't know you were that cold-blooded. What do you expect me to do? Go on living with a murderer and take a chance on him killing me, too? No, I guess not. I don't want you to get mixed up in this. I know the fellow to handle it for you. Joe Conroy. So your fears have been revived. You're wondering why everyone speaks so pointedly to you about the Bennett case. Why Kay was so upset when she found out about the monument. But above all, you can't forget that diary. What if Edith left behind some entry that would incriminate you? Laura? Laura? I'm in the dining room. Uh, has Mrs. Harrison come in since I phoned? No, sir. I thought it looked phony when he had Edith cremated after she'd ordered a gravestone for herself. Yes, and that's what started me wondering. Does uh, cremation actually destroy all evidence of poison? No, that's a popular fallacy. Quite a few killers have been convicted by a handful of ashes. Well, it won't take long to have this analyzed. You'll hear from me, Kay, probably tonight.
There you are, darling. Thank you, dear. I'm glad to see you're feeling so much better. I never felt better in my life. In fact, I feel too good to stay home. Let's go out and have dinner and do the town. What do you say? Well, I, I wish I felt up to it, but I couldn't have any fun with this splitting headache. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'd forgotten about that. I think I'll run upstairs and take something for it. Maybe you'll feel like it later, huh? Maybe. Yes, this is Kay. Is he there? He's downstairs, so it's all right to talk. You were right, Kay. He poisoned her. The police are on their way now to pick him up, so make sure he doesn't leave the house. I'll meet you at the DA's office when they bring him in. All right. going, dear? I thought I'd have a little fling for myself. I feel much better since I took that headache powder. I'd love to go along if you still want me to. Swell. We do a round of the night spots. Yes, and maybe we'll meet the milkman on the way home. Yeah. I've always wondered what he looked like. Who were you talking to on the phone just now? Oh, that was Linda. She wants us to have dinner tomorrow night. Well, I'll powder and be ready in a jiffy, darling. Wait a minute. How about a little kiss, sweetheart? Too bad you're such a liar and a cheat. I heard you talking on the phone. <laughs> Not seriously hurt, but call an ambulance anyway. The woman's dead from strangulation. I found this on her. This would have saved Harrison's neck, but it won't do him any good now. 